Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for October 9th, 2020. It's Friday, which means we're going to be talking about Vault, Vault certification, HashiCorp Vault. We are going to be talking about Vault architecture. This is the ninth objective, so we're getting close to the end here, but not as close as you might think, because amongst Objective 9 Vault architecture, it goes 9A through 9 K for the enabling objectives. There's a lot of stuff in here. So this is probably going to be at least a three-parter, possibly a four-parter to get through this objective. I think objective 10 is a lot faster though. So this is this is probably the biggest objective out of all of them. They packed a lot of stuff in here. Maybe it would have made sense to split it into two objectives. I don't know. That's not a judgment I can make. But what I can tell you is there's a lot of information in here, but a lot of it's interrelated. So that's, that's the important thing. So we're going to be talking about vault architecture today. I have two housekeeping items that I want to go over. Number one, if you haven't registered for HashiConf Digital yet, it is next week. It's going to be awesome. There's going to be two new product announcements, and I don't know what they are. I have no idea. I am in the HashiCorp, Amb HashiCorp Ambassador program, and they haven't told us. In fact, they've just been calling it Redacted 1 and Redacted 2. So whatever those things are, we are going to find out together. That's going to be pretty exciting. So go to HashiConf.com, get yourself registered. I know you might be a little tired of the virtual conference thing, but you really only have to watch the ones that are of interest to you. And I would probably just watch the keynotes and just find out what these new products are because I got to admit, I'm pretty curious. I have some guesses, but I'll keep them to myself and we'll see what happens next week. Anyway, I want to talk about that. I also want to mention that the Vault certification guide is coming along nicely. I am almost done with Objective 5. That's wrapping up today. And then I'll move on to Objective 6. And, you know, the, the train has left the station. We are chugging along. So hopefully that's going to get finished before the end of the... Uh, definitely going to be done before the end of the year. Uh, so if you haven't already, you can go to LeanPub and pick up a copy. And you'll get the updates as I complete them. All right, with that out of the way, let's check in. How you doing? You made it to Friday good for you. Well done. It has been a week for sure, but I'm excited because the week is wrapping up. Everybody made it through in one piece. And now we're talking about my second favorite topic, Vault. And I, know I hate to pick favorites, but you know, Terraform is my, that's my first love, but Vault, close second. Love it. All right. So Vault architecture, that's what we're going to talk about today. And specifically within the Vault architecture, I wanted to cover the objectives. So there's one that is describe the encryption of data stored by Vault. How is Vault encrypting and securing your data within its architecture? That's really important to understand. Closely related to that is describe Shamir secret sharing and unsealing and describe seal and unseal. So all three of those are very closely related. So I'm going to kind of cherry pick those out of the enabling objectives for this video. All right, so let's talk about kind of the vault architecture and what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and share out my screen here. There we go. If you want to think of vault in terms of a box. So let's call this is the box. This orange box is vault and it has this thing that's called the barrier. Ooh, that sounds mysterious. So we'll just, we'll call this the barrier. What's important about the barrier is I've got a wall here and I've got a wall here. And the only way to interact with stuff that's inside the barrier on the front end is through the API. If you're not using the Vault API, good luck, buddy. You don't get to talk to anything in this cool barrier. On the other side is the storage. And anything that leaves the Vault through the barrier to go to the storage is encrypted. All of that data, when it leaves, it's encrypted. Even if you're using in memory, it's encrypted. Anything that's going back into the barrier is not only decrypted, but it's also verified. So that's what you need to understand about the front and back end communication. Everything on the front end happens through the API. Whether you're using the CLI, you're using curl to make requests directly against the API, or if you're using the user interface, all that stuff sits outside the barrier and goes through the API to talk to stuff inside the barrier. So that's important to know. Anything that leaves the barrier to go to the storage back end is gonna be encrypted. And anything that comes in through the storage is going to be decrypted and verified. All right, so that's what you need to know. Now, how is this encryption happening? Because that is one of the important parts. 
it uses what's called the encryption key. I know that's, we're getting complicated here. It's, uh, well, I can't spell, but if I could spell, we'll just, we'll try that again. Uh, maybe I'll just draw a key. This is the closest I get to a key. So this is our encryption key. I'll give it a little E here. The encryption key is responsible for doing the encryption and decryption of information that's leaving for the storage and coming back in. Where does that encryption key come from? Because, you know, HashiCorp needs to, or Vault needs to have a way to construct a key that can decrypt the encryption key. So when Vault starts up, it is in a sealed state. That means that this encryption key has not been freed up. It can't load anything from storage and decrypt it because it doesn't have access to that encryption key. There's a process of unsealing the vault. And you've seen this. When you spin up a dev server, it's already unsealed for you, but it gives you a, a seal unseal key. That is the master key, essentially. Now, the master key, we'll draw another key here. And again, I apologize, I am not good at drawing, but that's my little key. We'll call this the master key. The master key, that encrypts the encryption key and stores that in the backend storage. What you're doing when you're unsealing the vault is you're grabbing this encryption key from storage and you're decrypting it using the master key. Now that's a lot of power for one person to have. Maybe you don't want just one person to have all that power. So what does Vault do? It actually splits that master key into shards. And so we've got a piece here and a piece here and a piece here. And each of those shards can go to a different person. Hi, I'm a different person. I'm a different person over here. And each of those people has one piece of the master key, but they don't have the master key themselves. And just like Voltron, what they need to do to create this master key is to have a quorum of shards using the Shamir secret sharing algorithm to reconstruct that master key. And when you initialize the vault, you determine how many shards there should be and how many of those shards you need to reconstruct the master key. So by default, it's usually five shards and then three that you need to reconstruct that master key. So when you're thinking about this whole process, if Vault is shut down, when you bring it back up, it's going to be in a sealed state. Now to unseal it, you need enough people with shards to submit to the Vault server to reconstruct this master key. Once it has enough of those shards, it goes ahead and decrypts the encryption key, and then that encryption key decrypts everything in storage into that barrier where it can be safely held. And this barrier, it's sitting in memory, never gets written to disk. That's the whole point here. This sits in memory. Okay, so that covers the encryption of data stored by Vault. That's how it does its encryption. That covers the Shamir secret sharing and unsealing process. We got that down. And I described seal and unseal. Now what's in this barrier? Cause you might have questions about what goes on in this barrier. Well, basically everything to do with vault. We've got tokens in there. We've got our policies sitting in here. We have our secrets engines. All the secrets engines you've enabled and the configuration of those secrets engines sits in the barrier. Likewise, all of your auth methods are sitting Encrypted in storage, get loaded into the barrier and then decrypted. So your configuration for those authentication backends, all in there. All of your system properties, all of those system properties sitting inside the barrier and your system configurations. And finally, very important, all your audit devices get loaded into the barrier. So when you're thinking about what's in the barrier, it's basically everything that has to do with Vault and none of that information is usable until you unseal the vault. So hopefully that clears up a few things when it comes to vault architecture. Now, obviously there's a lot more to dive into here, but I think that's probably enough for today. What we're gonna look at next is probably this storage piece here, because this is storage backend, and there are multiple options when it comes to storage backends. And then we can get into things like HA, high availability, and clustering, and what the strategy is behind having multiple vault servers for that high availability and how that works with the keys and decryption. So that's what we're going to cover 
at least the storage backend in the next module, or not the next module, my goodness, I'm so used to doing Pluralsight courses. That's what we're going to cover in the next video. But I think that does it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please share and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. It means the world to me when this gets shared out with more people. If you like what I'm doing and you wanna find a way to support me, hey, that vault guide is a great way to support me. And I really appreciate all of those purchases. That's absolutely fantastic. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe out there, and I'll see you next week.